Cuenca, Ecuador, a picturesque and amazingly beautiful place. Then why don't I live there? As many of you may know, I lived in Ecuador for three years. And as I said, it's just a absolute stunning place. When you first get there, you're just blown away by the mountains around you, about the old world 15th, 16th century buildings, the cobblestone streets. It's, it's really amazing. But over time, your perception begins to change. And over time, maybe as much as a year or more, you find out about some things that you just never suspected. And these are misconceptions brought about by people intentionally deceiving in order to make money by getting people to go there. And it's what originally got me into doing videos four years ago. And today I'm going to talk about some things that I've talked about before, but I'm going to go more into some depth with these things because there's people still being deceived. And I'm not saying you shouldn't go. As a matter of fact, I love the place. I have very good friends there. I had quite a life. I'm still involved. I'm, I'm still helping the San Martin Foundation. I was a founding member. I've stepped away from the board because I'm now living in Colombia, uh, but I'm still active with it. So I have ties to Cuenca, Ecuador. So I'm not here to slam it. But telling the truth about something isn't slamming it. And I think it's important to be very honest about what you're getting into if you're going to live in Cuenca, Ecuador. First of all, you hear it up to here about the amazing fresh fruits and vegetables. And there's nothing like it in the world. And it's such a crock. Everybody has fresh fruits and vegetables. But there's issues here in Cuenca, Ecuador, or there in Cuenca, Ecuador. Number one, a popular use, and you can see this yourself, you can go out to the farms and see this yourself, is the use of gray water. They don't have regulations about it. Gray water is basically human waste water. It's old water. It's, it's water that was used for something else, and they use it uh, on the crops. And gray water is a prime source for parasites. And in Ecuador, parasites is a big problem. You know, if you live there very long, you run into quite a few people. You're surprised at how many people have parasites. And some of those parasites can be life-threatening. It's a serious thing. And washing fruits and vegetables is one way to go about it. But it's, in general, a concern. Also on those fresh fruits and vegetables that are so organic and green. You know they use Roundup and other chemicals that are banned in most of the rest of the world? Don't believe me? Go into a hardware store and look on the shelves. I have. So I, yeah, this isn't just something I'm making up. They, they are commonly sold. You know, another thing that will strike you as strange, they say, you know, these are like heirloom. Well, they're not like heirloom. They're, they're kind of like freaks. I'll give you one example. Uh, uh, carrots. Now, I grew up, you know, I'm, I'm getting close to 70. And so I grew up in the United States before all of the things that people, you know, rail against now, where you just grew vegetables and you might use a, an organic fertilizer. We grew vegetables. And I could go out to the vegetable garden, lived in the country, and go out to the vegetable garden and pull up a carrot. And the carrot then wasn't a whole lot different than carrots now. Now, in Ecuador, you go to the market and you buy carrots, and there are these weird, huge, at the top, and quickly go down to a stubby bottom. They're this fat triangle. I never saw these growing up. These are not heirloom. They're just, they're very different. Not only misshapen, they'll have all kinds of weird things growing off them. 
but they're very fibrous and and they're not as tasty. They're I won't say they're tasteless, but they're close to it. These, you know, I love carrots, and I'll go and just grab a carrot out of the refrigerator and chew it. Those, not so much. They're not good. They're not enjoyable. There's a reason for that, and it's not because they're wholesome, fresh, and organic. Item number two. Oh, the Ecuadorian people are the most friendly people in the world. I think this is mostly said by people that really haven't traveled much because the truth is people all around the world are very friendly. I've, I've traveled to dozens of countries and I've lived in three countries outside of the United States for an extended period of time, a year or more. And I have never run into people that weren't friendly. But I do have to say something about the people in Ecuador in particular because they are rather unique. Unfortunately, it's not unique in that they're overly friendly. First of all, there's difference within Ecuador itself as far as being friendly. People on the coast are friendlier than people in the mountains. People are in the country are friendlier than in the city. City in the mountains? Well, that's Cuenca. So it's not so much. Now, it's a social norm to act friendly. It's Social norms are very strong. Peer pressure social norms are very strong in Ecuador. Cuenca is considered to be a conservative city, so it's even more so there. And the norm is to always put up this front of being friendly. I, let me tell you, I've got a friend who we were out walking around together. She was showing me some things. And a person comes up, and it was it looked like old home week. Hey, how you doing? It was another Ecuadorian. How you doing? How you been? How's your family? You know, the usual things. And uh, and they left. And I, and I said, so it's a good friend. Oh, no, 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 no. And this person has always been, was always very honest with me. We became good friends. And, the, and she opened up and it turned out that was a person that about a year prior had stolen from her. And I said, why were you being so nice? Why is it it was like nothing like that existed? She says, well, that's what we do. You know, it's, you know, in the United States, you might take a poke at the person or at the very least, you're, you're not going to be very appreciative of them. But in Ecuador, it's, it's a different story. It's also a thing about really not showing your emotions. It's very, it's a very stoic thing. Now, this is a public persona. Of course, within the family or within friends, if you go into a pub, for example, and you see eight or 10 people there watching the football, soccer game, you know, you can see them laughing and joking and carrying on, but those very same people, if they meet you, all of a, all of a sudden they become much more uh, formal in a certain sense, less so on the coast. But but mostly it is just not acceptable in their culture for them to be rude to you. So the impression is that it's a friendly, accepting, loving society. But the truth is it's the most biased, prejudiced uh, culture I've probably ever seen. You know, just some examples because they lump people into groups. Gringos, they all have money. Colombians, the men, they're all drug dealers. Colombian women, they're all whores. Venezuelans, they're all thieves. I have a friend uh, living in Cuenca for a number of years with her two daughters, and her name is Erica. And one time she came to see me. And Colombians are not like, Colombians wear their emotions on their sleeve. And she came to see me and she was crying. And she was crying because of the way that she was treated on an ongoing basis, but something in particular happened on that day. Plus her daughter came home from school and her daughter was crying because they were harassing her about being a Colombian whore. And she was like eight years old. Yeah, I've got another friend from Venezuela, the name is Daviana, and she's, one time she came to see me, she was very upset because of the way that she was being treated. You know, they, 
you hear this over and over again with local people in Cuenca that blacks are all thieves, particularly if they come from Esmeralda, that people on the coast are essentially, they're subhuman. Now, I know it's a running joke, call them monos, which is monkey, but that that so-called joke on the surface actually underlies a bias or a prejudice that actually exists. And even amongst themselves in Cuenca, uh, the rich look down on the poor, and the and the poor look up for some reason with reverence and respect at the rich. You know, there's this this class thing that's alive and well that goes all the way back to the Spanish. So it's just the culture. Now that's not to say that once you know people, they're like everywhere else. They're, you know, they can be warm and friendly. You can have very good friends. They're not going to be like I just described, but. Prior to that happening, you're an outsider and you're part of a group. Now, I've got several dozen good friends that are Ecuadorians, and we still keep in touch. So I, I'm not slamming them all. I'm explaining the culture that they're in. And many of these things I have discussed with them. And they concede. Or in some cases, they just come right out, yeah, not only that, but this. So it, it's not like it's a secret there. And I think the younger people are, the more they resent that culture. But it's still there. It still exists. And there are good things that go along with it. But this idea of the friendliest people in the world is really a misconception because that's perpetuated by people that come and meet people and the cab driver was oh so nice to them. Well, he's obligated to be. And the truth is, you have no idea what he's really thinking about you, if he's thinking about you at all. So that's a front that's put up. So these are things that, unless you get really embedded in the culture for a period of time, you may not even notice. I mean, I've met people who have lived there three, four years, and they're oblivious to this, and they'll argue with me. But it's funny, I put up a video talking about some of these things once, and all the positive comments came from Ecuadorians saying, yeah, you're right on. Okay, what's next? Fantastic and cheap medical. Well, cheap, yeah, uh, somewhat, yes. Um, everybody wants to compare it to the United States, but you, you know that saying, apples to oranges, it really doesn't compare. But... Um, it is certainly inexpensive. You know, you can go see a doctor for 15 to $25. However, the healthcare system is essentially bankrupt. It's a government-run, we'll say single-payer, but it's a government-run system. Now, there is a private system that runs alongside it, but the actual system that all the funds are put into is medical, and the private is just whatever they can, you know, contend with themselves. The result of that is a lack of caring. It, I mean, just picture a DMV or the way DMVs used to be. They were notorious for it. I mean, you go in and you stand in line and you get to the line and, you know, you finally get up to the window and they say, oh, you need another form, go stand in another line for two hours. And nobody cares. I mean, that's the way the medical system is in Ecuador. They just... They blindly follow the rules. There's a total lack of empathy because they're going to get paid anyway. And they just, it, it kind of works against the culture thing that I just explained. But they see it as also part of the culture is this officiousness, this um, I'm wearing a uniform, therefore I have authority. And it's, it's used as a weapon. I've experienced it a few times. Um, and it manifests itself in some things medically that can be very serious. For example, an extreme weight for appointments. Uh, another little story, that same friend, her mom, has diabetes and some other complications. She's also blind. So she got ill and her daughter went in and made an appointment for her. They made the appointment two months away. Well, 
you would think that would be bad enough. But they canceled and rescheduled three times after that. By the time she finally got in was nearly a year later, and by that time she had new complications, she was bedridden for months, she lost her job, and if you're blind in Ecuador, it's not the easiest thing to get a job. She had been working as a seamstress in a in a factory, and you know they couldn't they couldn't hire her if she couldn't come to you know they couldn't keep her on if she couldn't come to work, and this was a direct result out of people that did not care. There's constant issues you'll see it all the time, and right now there's an, there's kind of an uproar in the Gringo community because someone who's been around for a long time, a very good person, who's always one of the first ones to help, uh, I'll just use the name Bradley, he went in for a relatively routine procedure and he came out with infection after infection. And he may end up uh, being an amputee over it. But he's not the only one. There's a number of people that have run into a similar situation where they go for something routine and get an infection and they can't seem to get a handle on it and it gets worse and worse and worse. I know one person who was operated on three different times in the same place because of the infection to the point where they didn't think they'd be able to operate on them a, a, a fourth time. Uh, there's another one that uh, named Andrew I'll use, went through months of pain. Uh, he would post up on Facebook over the course of about a year, not with new problems, but with just never-ending problems over an originally simple thing. And sometimes the advice will be, well, just go ahead and amputate and instead of taking, you know, it, it, because it's no, no care or concern about it. So this isn't a, a one-off. These are things that happen all the time. And you have somebody say, well, but I think they're wonderful because I, you know, every time I go and pay them, they're so nice to me. Or I went in because of one thing or another and everything just went smooth. Yeah, well, of course that's going to happen. You know, it's probably maybe even the majority of time. But if 30 or 40 percent of the time it can become life-threatening because of incompetence or indifference, I don't see that as a good medical system. You can see a horrific treatment of dogs. They're basically considered to be a tool to, you know, bark if somebody comes around. But when the owners get tired of feeding them, they just toss them out on the street. Sometimes they're just, you know, puppies and they're oh so cute, they get bigger, they toss them out on the street. There are personal volunteers that try to find these street dogs and take them in. I took in a street dog it was eight years old, a beautiful dog. And for two weeks, I end up watching this dog waste away until it's, it died. This dog's head was in my lap for its last couple days uh, because it became paralyzed. And it, 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 was, it was just a disaster. It was heartbreaking. But no one seems to care because those things aren't necessary. You also used to see roaming packs of dogs that would attack people on the streets. It, it became a regular thing to see on Cuenca uh, social media. Hey, what's the best way to defend yourself from a dog? Oh, get some lemon juice, put it in a squirt gun. I use bug spray. People were having these conversations because this happened so much. Now, fortunately, rabies is not a thing in Cuenca because of the altitude it uh, kind of protects you from it but it's still a possibility but that doesn't make it any more joyful to have one two three four dogs attack you and take bites out of you it's not the dog's fault they're out there fending for themselves you have to watch where you're going it, just about anywhere you go you're going to see dog crap in the street the predominant thing is not to go out and walk your dog. It's to just send your dog out. And so the dog just runs around the neighborhood, craps wherever he wants to crap, usually in the middle of the sidewalk, and then he comes back home. 
Now you'll see some owners at the park with their dog and you know keeping control of the dog and using plastic bags. But that's because everybody can see. But if you just let your dog kind of go out and run around the neighborhood, it's it's a different thing. And it's not unusual to you know go out in in the morning early and see garbage strewn all over that hadn't been picked up yet. Now they do have a lot of people that work for the government that are street street cleaners that are cleaning up. But it shouldn't be that way, you know, and they shouldn't have be, have they shouldn't have to be doing that. If you care about dogs, Ecuador is kind of a nightmare. Now we're going to talk about this last thing. And on the face of it, it's just something awesome, beautiful, modern, very cool. But at its roots, it really summarizes what is wrong with Ecuador from my point of view. We're going to talk about the Tranvia. I mean, it's running now. They've got six trains, five cars each, that are just, during its working hours, it's, it's running. The fare's free and for another couple months, I think. Well, they're still, it's still in its testing phase, so it's a free fare. Plus, they have four uh, trains in reserve. Recently, I looked at some of the news coverage because it is opened up to the public and people are riding it. And you're seeing the same story over and over and over again. I was against it, but now I love it to the point where it's becoming suspicious to me because they're just kind of repeating it, the same thing. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's a bit of propaganda. But it's, you know, it's such a prime example of, of Ecuador's biggest issue. First of all, the decision to build it. Who decided to build this? It was not the people. There was no referendum. There was no outcry for it. The people in charge decided for them to do this. They decided what was best for the people. Now, what did they get out of it? They got tons of corruption. The corruption was with politicians, with the construction people, was with management companies. It went through three or four management companies, um, all from out of the country. Now, what was the motivation behind building the Tranvia? Well, publicly stated, it was to take care of the growing traffic issues. Big problem of pollution, bus pollution in Cuenca, Ecuador, and so it was to address that. And, and why did they have this pollution problem? Because the buses that run in Cuenca, Ecuador, are primarily these uh, considerably older buses, not very well maintained, they're, they're huge dinosaurs. Here is the problem with the Tranvia. It shut down hundreds of businesses for several years as they were digging up the roads for tracks and cars couldn't get through, deliveries couldn't get through, bankruptcies were rampant. The cost just kept escalating. The delays were just never ending. The people didn't ask for it. They did, they do think it, you know, it's too crowded. They do think the pollution is is bad, so traffic and pollution. But what they could have done, instead of all of this expense, massive expense, uh, they could have built three tramvias for the price they ended up paying. They could have bought themselves a fleet of hybrid minibuses. The minibuses would eliminate the traffic issues. A lot of the traffic issues is, is based on the sheer size of the buses that they use. It would have been a tenth of the cost. Businesses would not have been affected whatsoever. It certainly would have eliminated the old bus issue and it would have eliminated this uh, pollution issue. This whole thing was a never-ending nightmare. Yes, it's very European. But here's the sad part. They still need the buses. This Tramvia is very limited on where it runs. It, so you still got these old buses. It's still polluted. Bottom line is it ruined lives. It cost a fortune. Didn't solve the problem. And this in a nutshell is what goes on in Ecuador. So I know there's going to people I know there's going to be people that hate me for this video. But you know, I'm speaking the truth as I see it. 
And again, I'm still involved there. I love the place. I, I look forward to going back. But it doesn't change these issues. So I hope you find it in your heart to forgive me. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.